Welcome to Kovi 450. This is my first impressions. I haven't driven this at all, like 50 meters <laughs> before I started the video. And the bike already feels like an enduro bike, like a proper enduro bike. I'm not here to discuss the origins of this motorcycle or any politics around this motorcycle. I'm just here because I love bikes. This is the road legal version, so the basic model that you're gonna get if you buy one of these. It has indicators, it has everything, but it's pretty much ready to race right from the box. That's at least what's been told to me. So let's take it out on the ride and uh, I'll give you all the impressions I can during this day. People have been saying that the suspension feels a little bit rough, but uh, yeah, I kind of notice it maybe, but I kind of expect that from a rally bike. It's not like a GS or something like that. It's not trying to be that. Seller said that uh, the suspension is gonna feel a little bit more plush after it's been ridden in, but this is a brand new bike or at least almost a brand new bike. So the suspension is gonna feel a little bit more stiff. Okay, we're riding here in the sixth gear, doing 80. And the fairing definitely helps things to go along much smoother than uh, they would be on a KTM 690, for example. It's very easy to ride on. It's not violently fast in uh, these lower RPM ranges. The bike feels pretty smooth, actually. And the vibrations are way less than they are on the KTM 690 or the Husqvarna versions of those bikes. I would say that the vibrations to my hands right now are pretty much pretty close to the Honda Sierra 300 actually. Really nice grip from these tires. They're something like a 50-50 tire on this bike. And uh, I feel I can carve these twisty corners very well with this bike. I actually missed a corner right there. Let's go back. Let's see how the turning circle is. Wow, the bike feels extremely balanced. But you can stall it, as you can see right there. It is easier to stall this bike than it is, for example, my Honda. But that was my mistake, not the bike's mistake. But it feels really balanced, like... I don't feel like the... It's not intimidatingly high the weight point of this bike it's really easy to control even here standing still uh, and uh, I'm not the tallest rider so all right we get some off-roading done now so now we get to find the ABS so we press the set button here ABS mode open all so all the ABS is on rear in the rear and front and now we close the rear if we pick this one so that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna leave the front ABS on so we can test it a little bit. The menu is very, very nice and straightforward. The text is a little bit small, but uh, for my eyes it's fine. All right, let's do some off-roading. I can confirm what I've read online, that the bike does like to pull on the higher RPM ranges much better than the low RPM ranges, but even now I'm riding between 4,000 and 6,000. Third gear here from 50. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a lot of power. For this kind of bike, for this kind of weight, there is plenty of power for me. I'm just getting used to this bike and I don't know this road, so... Yeah, but drifting it here, doing 70 it's no problem you don't need a clutch dump the rear end comes comes loose very nicely that makes the bike really fun to ride <laughs> even there like doing 70 it does drift just using the throttle and I'm at fourth gear but it starts going after six or 7,000 RPM. That's when it likes to pull. If you ride it aggressively, this bike seems to be enjoying that. If we go third gear here, very slowly, like doing 30, it's still pulling, it's still pulling. It's 
maybe not as fast as a KTM 690 or some of those more aggressive rally bikes from KTM. But for a 4 450, I think this is plenty of power. That the suspension starts to work at higher speeds even better. It definitely enjoys being at those high rally speeds. But I have to say the vibrations are really, really well controlled. I already forgot about the vibrations. I'm not even thinking about them. So that's very good. Very good. Yeah, when the bike hits its power band at uh, 7000 RPM, that's when you get the rear end loose pretty much at any any speed. Yeah. This bike you really have to take by the scruff of the neck and just bring it out at 8000 RPM. So far I can definitely say that the suspension is, is the highlight of this test ride so far. In these kind of roads, it doesn't feel too hard or crashy. It's, uh, it's relatively comfortable actually. Let's turn here again and test the turning circle. Really small turning circle, but you have to be careful with the throttle because this is gonna stall much easier than some of the bigger bikes. <laughs> yeah, the, the suspension is definitely more, maybe more rough than, uh, let's say, the KTM 690 right out, out of the box. But I have to say that I feel like I can, I can trust it right from the start. I don't feel like the suspension is going to throw me off the bike or anything. Even if there's a bigger bump like, like this one. Yeah, it takes it very well, very controlled and sophisticated. I don't know this track, I'm lost constantly. Would be nicer to do this in some known tracks that I usually ride. I don't feel like I, ha I would have to do anything to this suspension. Ooh, <laughs> and it does pull the front wheel up if you if you want it to happen, but it's not going to happen by accident. <laughs> oh my god. That wasn't good. Shit. Well, <laughs> that's been tested now. Crap. Well, at least I can say the bike is really light to lift up if you do this stupid thing. Shit.
Well, uh, now I feel really bad because I didn't want to crash the test ride bike, but I did. Crap. Let's see the damage. Well, the crash test is done now. And the bike, as you can see, it takes a crash like that, like nothing. This was definitely not a part of the plan. As you can see, there is a uphill and then right after the hill, there is this ditch here. Not very deep, but still, I couldn't react in time. I was too excited about riding the bike. I have to find the mirrors and stuff. Yeah, that wasn't a part of the plan, definitely. <laughs> but I, I came way too fast from there. And I feel so bad. I cut the mirror off from this Kobe. It snapped clean off. I have it in my backpack, but I can't get it back because it's, uh, it's cut off. But look at this. There's nothing to break on this Kobe, even though that was quite a bad one, actually. And uh, the bike is like brand new, still. Like I got some dirt underneath this, uh, these protective parts here. But other than that, the bike is fantastic. So this is exactly why you buy this kind of bike. These bikes can take it. Even without any protective gear here in the handlebar, it's fine. I don't know if I even hit this very super bad because there's no dirt here or anything but I definitely got it sideways pretty good and uh, the bike is still fantastic in fantastic condition nothing else broke other than the mirror and if I would buy this bike I would definitely change these mirrors out to something more off-road capable so you can twist them out of the way but because these stock mirrors are so far on the side you're gonna break this if you fall down even a little bit harder that wasn't like a super fast speed or anything but still a bit of a scare because i was scared that i would break the plastics or anything something like that or myself but the bike looks fantastic still so i feel really bad that i have to tell the the owner that uh, <laughs> i crashed the bike this is a uh, definitely not fun feels bad i have to sit here for a while and before i can continue but the bike definitely can handle it nothing is broken other than the mirror and one of my ram mounts so i can't have the camera pointing at me anymore because i need the navigation to continue but everything else on the bike no problem and the bike is super super easy to lift up i would even say that it's it's just as easy to lift up than my honda 300 getting it out of that little ditch there was no issue let's continue the ride a little bit slower this time because i don't know this track and because i'm trying to explain how the bike feels and look at the map at the same time mistakes happen i know it's no excuse i was uh, careless doing too much speed but it is a lot happening when you try to vlog at the same time and try to review the bike so mistakes can happen i'm sorry <laughs> let's continue the gearbox definitely feels feels like it's working as it's supposed to there's no clunkiness or any missed gear so far no false neutrals nothing feels actually just as nice as my Honda which I consider to be one of the nicest gearboxes that I've ever used at least on an adventure bike even the Torx 660 with the quick shifter is not in some cases it's not as smooth I definitely don't have any issues with the height of the bike either from just memory it's pretty much just as tall as the KTM 690s stock but because this bike is even lighter it's much easier for me as a shorter rider to control this bike so I don't think you need to be much concerned about the height at least if you are at least 5'8 uh, or above I'm 5'8 and a half and I maybe have a little bit taller inseam than some people my height 
but uh, the bike is easy to control even standing still because it's so light. It feels almost as light as nim and nimble as my 300 does. There is a little bit of more, bit more resistance in the turning of the bike when you do this, but not much. It's between the 300 and the KTM 690. The 690 feels much more sluggish doing this, but this is very darty and very fast. I like that the sitting position is, the bench is straight. You can take any position lengthwise on this seat. You can sit back, you can sit up front, get really on top of the tank. Even though this has the dual tank, I can sit right on top of the tank, as you can see there. So really nice on the seating position. The bench is narrow, but so far it's comfortable. I like the seat. I, I don't really like a soft seat anyway. I like the seat that has a bit, bit more resistance so you don't dig into the seat. Because longer rides, you're gonna feel a soft seat might be even more uncomfortable than a, than a hard one. But so far as an adventure bike, I don't think the seat is definitely, it's not going to be comfortable for long days on the saddle, but this is not a bike for sitting down. You're standing up half of the, half of the day, so you shouldn't have any issues. So far I've been sitting down most of the time and uh, it feels great because I can sit close enough to the bar. I don't feel like my hands are in an awkward position. I can take this attack position very easily here and I can position myself on the bike very easily anywhere I like so that's how this kind of bike is uh, the ergonomy of this bike is gonna be suiting most riders tall and short I've been riding this kind of road for uh, I don't know how much but maybe half an hour and I would have no trouble taking this all the way to Lapland and North Cap and long trips on the saddle with the first impressions at least even when the ABS is on both back and front, bike still stops pretty well. Let me show you. From 80. Really nice. So the ABS is uh, tuned to work in loose surfaces. I know this is not the loosest of surfaces, but still it's a gravel road. So the stopping power is definitely pretty good. What a beautiful day it is here in Finland. Oh, a bunny! <laughs> oh, go, 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 go! <laughs> oh, it's why do they ru run with the road? Maybe they want to race me. I'm gonna try to go past. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to run over a bunny. That's the uh, only thing this ride is missing. I crash and then I kill the bunny. <laughs> that would be terrible. I'm not constantly remembering that I'm on a very aggressive rally bike. This is uh decently comfortable of course you can't compare this to a t7 or anything like that the, the comfort on a twin cylinder is always going to be a little bit higher but this is not that far behind i don't think no problem just cruising at 70 80 kilometers an hour here on this twisty road the bike feels feels like it's at home so taking these two trails that are not right next to your house I don't see any problem doing that. Like I'm doing 80 at sixth gear. The bike is 4,300 RPM, pretty close. And feels great. You can also enjoy the twisties. With these 50-50 tires, I feel very confident, confident in the tarmac sections as well. Yeah, very balanced, very stable actually. I've been riding this road for a 15 kilometers right now and just sitting down and I can report that the seat is a little bit narrow and you are gonna feel like you're riding an enduro bike which tend to have a little bit narrower seat but it's definitely not the worst seat I've ever sat on. But if it was a little bit wider, I could sit very comfortably here for longer periods of time. But the seat is the number one thing that's bothering me. 
uh, riding in this normal roads like this, just trying to get to the trails. I'm not trying to get to the fuel station because <laughs> it's been reporting low fuel for the last, I don't know, 15, 20 kilometers. And I still have 6.6 .6 for the fuel station. So I really hope that there's enough fuel for, <laughs> for me to get there. Uh, other than that, uh, this is gonna take all day if I have to push this bike to the fuel station. I'm actually trying to ride closer to a highway right now to do the acceleration test with the race box equipment to this bike. So we can see where it sits when we compare it to the KTM 690 and the tuned Honda CRF 300 and maybe the stock Honda CRF because I already have tests done with all of those bikes. So it should be seven and a half liters both sides. Looks like I can get 4.6. Let's see if we can get more. So there was still quite a lot of fuel actually there because I could get almost five liters on that other side. It should be 15 liters in the front tanks combined and then uh, 15 liters in the rear tank, but I'm not gonna fill that up. In most riding situations, you're only gonna use the front tanks to preserve the bike's balance but then if you go to some longer trip somewhere you can put the rear tank full of fuel and you're gonna have 30 liters i have no idea what the range is gonna be but depending on the riding style i would guess it's 50 500 kilometers to seven even 700 kilometers both of the tanks should be rather full full enough for me so i got in 11.6 liters so there was still like 3.5 liters there bit tricky with these hoses you can probably take it off and but works like that fine itself is, feels very stable. It doesn't feel like it's gonna be thrown around or anything. It's uh, very direct in its movement and I don't feel any pulling or I don't even feel the wind is shaking me in any way so it's not comfortable like a parallel twin bigger adventure bike but it's doable. It's super windy as well but I don't really notice the bike trying to go anywhere I don't want it to go. Even with the side wind that I'm having at the moment. I don't know if you can even hear me. The wind is so bad. But the bike is very stable. Much more stable than my CRF 300 at this speed. And especially in this wind. These conditions right now are pretty bad, I would say. And the bike is doing it pretty well. The suspension is shaky. That's the only negative I can, I can say about this. If I twist the throttle at sixth gear, it's not pulling my arms off, but it's gaining speed. The stability of the bike itself feels really nice at those speeds. I would say that uh, for some reason, even though this is not much heavier than my Honda, it feels more stable doing that speed. Maybe it's because the rally tower is not attached to the steering column, so there's not as much weight and not as much push to the steering column because the fairing is attached to the frame. So that's probably what makes some of that stability on this bike. So definitely better suited up for high speed riding this bike, in my opinion. And the engine power is definitely better on this than my Honda to do those highway, highway stints. This doesn't feel like it's running out of puff at those speeds. It's pulling still relatively well. One thing I'm noticing here when I'm standing up is that the footbacks are way better than any of my bikes. There's a lot of room to place your feet wherever you feel like you want to put them and uh, even, even after riding 
couple of hours, I don't feel any pinching in my fingers. So that's telling you a lot about the riding position, but also the vibrations. I still don't feel Ill, any numbness in my fingertips in either one of my hands. So that's the same thing with my Honda, because it's so smooth, I don't feel the numbness like this. But if I drive a very vibey bike, I can definitely start feeling that uh, the tingling in my fingers. Anyone who's ever ridden an uh, aggressive thumper knows what I'm talking about. So in here I don't notice anything and no uncomfortable feelings to my hands. So very nice, very comfortable. I would say that this is probably uh, one of the best TET machines you can buy. Especially considering the price. This is way cheaper than a Bone Stock KTM 690, for example, that I think this is a perfect companion to, to compare this to that bike. This has the fairing stock. Suspension is supposed to be good enough. I can't really tell you much about that with this short ride, but off-roading at least, it feels fantastic. On the road, it's a little bouncy, but yeah, it should be enough. This bike for the TED trips that I do would be perfect. Would I prefer this bike instead of my modi highly modified CRF 300? That's a very good question. If you like a little bit more aggressive style of riding, this is much better than the Honda. Even with all the kit that I put in the Honda, and I think these are pretty comparable in price. The Honda is pretty much the same price with all that I've done to the bike than this is. And uh, I would say I would have no trouble taking this bike to just as hard of a terrain that I do with the Honda. This feels very nimble. And now that I already crashed this once, I can tell this is super easy to lift up. It doesn't weigh anything. I would actually say that comparing directly, I would pick this Kovi 450 if I could pick any other bike. Between, between my Touareg 660 and my Honda, this bike is, I think it lives somewhere in the middle. The comfort levels are pretty much the same as the Honda, but the power levels are much higher than the, even the tuned Honda. But it doesn't win with the Touareg. But then again, with the Touareg, it's heavy. It's, uh, it's not meant for the same things that this bike is meant for. So, against the Honda, the riding Tet, I would pick this Kobe. This is definitely for someone who wants the bike to have a little bit more aggression to it. Someone who, who can't afford the 450 KTM purpose-built the rally bike that they sell for 40,000 euros or something insane like that. This is a bike with similar specs that you can actually buy. And that's what I love about this one. It brings that rally style and that rally performance to all of us. So anyone can buy this bike. This is not like it's a crazy investment that you need to sell your house and kidney to buy. As embarrassing as that was for me, because I crashed the bike. I'm not really not happy about that. I'm really embarrassed that it happened so early in the test ride. I lost the other camera and I lost the mirror, but I think this is now tested pretty thoroughly. I think I deserve a thumbs up for even leaving that in the video. I could have just as easily just <laughs> left it out, but I wanted you to see how the bike is after it's been crashed. It wasn't super hard crash, but still a thumble. The bike took it very well, but that's a good reminder for all of us to wear our protective gear at all times, even though this was a quick little ride I could have easily just left my knee pads off or even ridden with the sneakers on but I have my full gear on and I feel fine after that little thumble.